How you going guys? Welcome to our first Zoom chat. What we're doing today, I'm going to shoot it over to Dan and let him tell you exactly what we're going to be doing on this chat today. Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're doing well. What we're doing today is we're going to be discussing the, uh, the basically our EVPs and captures from season one of Night Watchers. So we hope you've enjoyed the video. And um, where we want to go first, Pete, what do you want to bring up? Okay, the first one we're going to have a bit of a chat about is the Maribara Museum. Yeah. This location, I tell you, this location <laughs> was awesome, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. It's about, uh, a, what, about two and a half hours from where we live. Yeah, about so it was a bit of a, yeah, that was a full on night. It was a bit of a hectic drive to begin with to get up to the location where we were going. But um, <laughs> yeah. tell us a bit about the place then. Well, basically, um, our K2 meter, our EMF detector was going off, wasn't it? I remember when we went upstairs oh, yeah. into that into that, um, well, what would you call it, that, uh, that second level? Promenade. Yeah, and um, where that statue was, that statue of, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, oh, I can't remember his name now, but anyway, if you watch that no, video, you'll Colonel, see. Uh, yeah. Uh, Colonel, Colonel. Yeah, something, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, the EMF detector was just going off, wasn't it? Like, it was absolutely brilliant. Like, we, we checked it over. There was, we even asked the guy that built it, is there any metal in it? You know, like, yeah, yeah, he was there. He said, there's nothing electrical in it. It's nothing like that. It's just a carving. Um, you know, all there was was basically where the head connected to the body. There was mm. a bit of something in there, but it was nothing electrical. You know, it was nothing like that. And this thing he was said, going on. Yeah, he said it was a steel rod that held the, um, the head statue the in position. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. but, but that, no, that was no, absolutely insane, wasn't it? Oh, mate, brilliant. Um, and, you know, even when we moved over to the other part of that room where his medals and stuff were, it was going off as well. You know, going off. It was, um, mm. I, I really thought it was what great. What about the story of that bugle? That was an amazing <laughs> uh, story. Yeah, that was pretty actual, cool. The actual, um, the chances of that happening is just, you know, one in a billion, you know, like one in a trillion. Oh. You know, it's like, easy. Uh, easy. It's like, yeah, it, people have to watch that video to hear the story. But in that video, yeah. basically, we get a bit of a tour first before we start our investigation. And um, yeah. the tour guide, he was great. Um, so listen to the tour guide, and uh, you'll hear the story of that bugle. It was <laughs> amazing. What about the static cam? The, what we call it there? Oh. Just, uh, that Especially when we said when we set that static cam right up on the top top floor, guys. So this place had um, three levels. Basically, you had your ground floor, your mezzanine level, and then the top floor. Yeah. So before we started the investigation, Dan and I sat down and had a chat, and we thought it'd be a good idea to set this static cam right up on the top floor where there's no noise, no people about, and uh, we left it up there. Mm. The stuff we caught there, those footsteps. Those footsteps were the amazing. The footsteps, yeah. Clear as. Yeah. Just, like, just, just the sounds of and then things creaking and then the, what about the whistling there was also when we had the, oh that whistling oh that was, was a tune yeah it was a tune there was a whistle and then there was a hum mm. you know it was a, a female hum we were the only people up there there were people right downstairs right at the very front of the venue but they were just mm. sitting together talking very very quietly there was no way they would have been heard on the static cam up the top in mm. that area where that whistling and that humming came from you know yeah because um, there was a there was the three of us there. There was you and I and your Mrs. Claire. Yeah. Um, came along and did the filming for us, which was yeah. much appreciated. Thank you, Claire. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, that place, and the good thing about that place too, which was um, really eye-opening for me, they've got 10,000 pieces yeah. of memorabilia, war memorabilia, yeah. Um, yeah. from where every Australian has fought in every war through history. Yeah. So. Just that, that history alone, and two, it's privately owned, which is just amazing to grab yeah. so much uh, information <laughs> and memorabilia. Exactly, yeah, big time. You know, even when we had the static cam set up there too, the footsteps, you know, you had, we had a static cam set up on the, on the stairs, mm. right, shooting, up, shooting up the stairs, and there was no, no one walking up it. You hear the footsteps of someone walking. Yeah, up that was nuts. That's, that's, that's when we set it up on the uh, mezzanine level uh, yeah. where that statue was. Yeah. So, and it was only a small, from what I remember, it was only a small um, set staircase. And yeah. where we set the static cam up just above the staircase, 
you would have seen someone walking up those stairs and it was completely, there was nothing there. Nothing no, there. So, no, nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, completely blank. Yeah, that was there. pretty, pretty intense. <laughs> that was good. I actually yeah. enjoyed that. I actually enjoyed that place. And we might even go and do an investigation there in the future. I reckon that was a, that'd be another yeah. good one to re-hit that one. Um, I, def- yes. I definitely want to get back up to Maribara because beautiful, beautiful place. And just the history there alone history. is just phenomenal. That brings us to Maribara Cemetery. Because when we were up at the... Uh, the what we call it the museum we thought well let's check out the cemetery while we're here so we went around yeah. the corner to the well, it was only a few blocks away wasn't it yeah we killed two two birds with one stone since so, yeah. we we're in um in the area we thought yeah why not yeah that place oh that place was phenomenal massive yeah. cemetery like i couldn't believe how big that cemetery yeah. was massive was absolutely huge. It was all in sections too. There was like the, you know, the Catholics and then there was the Christians and then, you know, it was Protestants set out, and, yeah, and all that kind in of different, stuff. different areas, different sections. Yeah. But um, it was massive. What about the, um, there's one part on that video that really blew me away was the orb. We caught an orb on there. Now, orbs, we're very uh, about with orbs, you know, but um, there's this one video on the clip. You'll see it basically. Um, the orb come, Pete and I are standing there, and then you see this, uh, we'll use the word orb, orb comes flying in and then fades away before it even gets close to the camera. It fades into nothing. Yeah. Now, bugs don't do that, and dust doesn't do that. If it's going to be a blurred thing, it'll float across and you just go out of mm. shot, you know? Or it'll, or it'll come close and then just get bigger and bigger and then blur and then, you know? You can actually see it. If you watch it, you'll see it just comes in and it just fades out like it was just dissipated, just goes away. It was pretty intense. The EVPs that come through on that um, cemetery too were pretty amazing as well. Yeah. Um, that was phenomenal. And the drain on the equipment. Mind oh. you, we were up at, we did the um, uh, museum first, but we had power packs and it was just draining the left, right and centre. Just draining it even through the power packs. The power packs were fully charged, hadn't been used yet, plugged straight in. Just sucked them dry, you know. Um, so yeah. that was so, pretty cool. That was, I have to yeah, admit, that was a good one. Yeah, where else? I think, oh, well, I think yeah. that by the end of by the end of that video, there we uh, were filming on phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were. We were using phones. I think we even used Claire's phone at one stage too. We're like, yeah, we did. <laughs> well, like, what have we got? Let's just use that. <laughs> oh, gee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that that even the the feel there, like I had such a like ominous feel to that place. Yeah, you know, it was. Like, we've done cemeteries before. There's only oh, yeah. a, one other cemetery we've had that ominous feeling. We'll discuss that later. But um, Maribor, I found that it did have a very ominous feel to it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's an yeah. interesting place, at yeah. the, uh, to say the very least, you know. Well, I think we're on edge as soon as we got out of the car. I know you were, especially. <laughs> <laughs> I was freaking out. It was yeah. shocking. Like, uh, ah, we just come out of the spot. museum and done that place, and we're already on edge, so... But um, yeah. where are we travelling to now, Pete? We are actually going to talk about Pomona Cemetery now. Pomona, now, Pomona Cemetery. Pomona, we yeah. took, yeah, w- with that video, if you go and watch the Pomona video, uh, Pomona Cemetery video, yeah. we actually took um, Emmy, who does our PR, yeah. and we took another friend, Sarah. Yeah. Now, I'll let Dan explain what happened with Sarah because I think that was the big pivotal point of that whole video. Yeah, um, it was absolutely awesome. So take it away, bro. bro. Yeah, well, basically, uh, I was doing an EVP session. Well, we we're all standing there doing one, but I had the gear, and the two girls were standing next to me. Pete had the camera, and uh, I'll show a clip. You'll see a clip here of the actual uh, time it happened. But um, we, we're pretty sure, yeah, you ninety nine percent that it said Sarah's name. You know, it said uh, it is Sarah. You know, this EVP came through, and we're like, "What? No, it couldn't have." And then when I got back and I checked it, and I was doing the editing and put it all together, lo and behold, yeah, it said it is Sarah. And um, (laughs) to this day, I think she doesn't admit it. I think she's too scared to admit it. (laughs) She um, she really freaked out. Like we had protection crystals with us as well. Yeah. So. We gave em and, uh, Emmy and Sarah one each um, yeah. on the way home. Remember, we were on the way home and 
I gave uh, Sarah my piece and she goes, oh, thank you so much. I just it felt really bad. And, yeah. and that was the video um, when we were discussing on our last video about when you leave, when you feel it's time to leave a location. Yeah. yeah. And the way the girls were feeling in that video, we thought, and they, they told both Dan and I, we've got to leave. So that's when you've really got to start to listen to your intuition and your gut feelings and stuff like that. So we left that video. That's one place I really want to go back to because it was, it's in the middle of nowhere, but the, just the feel there of the yeah. place was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 big time. Um, you know, there was, yeah, like I said, we caught a lot of good EVPs there. Um, M even said, if you watch the video too, M, M said that she could hear a sound and she said it sounded like somebody <laughs> in a coffin bashing. You know, like in there, a coffin, like bashing. <laughs> I just watched it. I just watched it before, and I was because I was watching it to get some, um, yeah, you know, to remember the the video. You know, yeah, what happened? The, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I was like, oh, I forgot all about that. So yeah, but I mean, um, also you just you've just triggered my memory. Yeah. Um, also, uh, they the smell. Both M and Sarah could smell. Yeah, that horrible smell. That's right. And you and I didn't smell it. No. Nah, we that. couldn't smell it. Yeah, I remember that now. We couldn't oh. smell it. And there was one point where I was like, and after a little while, I went, oh, I think I smelled that smell. And then all of a sudden it was gone. Then I couldn't smell it. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I didn't like, smell but, they, it but those two were like, like, it was like it was right there. Like, it smelled like, what'd they say? Poo or something, whatever it was. It smelled yeah. disgusting. And, um, yeah, they didn't. They didn't use the word poo, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they were a but, bit um, more, a bit more full on with it. But um, yeah. yeah, that was um, that was a very interesting location. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, what we'll do is move on to our next video um that we want to talk about, and that is the Sunny Bray Island oh. Hospital. <laughs> this Sunny Bray, I will admit is one of my favorite locations yeah by far um, yeah this yeah. place was absolutely amazing <laughs> the um part one of the parts that really just i can still see it is, and hear it clear as day is when you asked um if a spirit was here with this mm. and that spirit within 10 seconds answered us back yeah Yes. Can't what was her over. name? Uh, was... uh, uh, um, uh, something here. Uh, oh, uh, oh, I can't even think. I can't remember it anyway. Yeah. If you go to that video, and it's within the first, I think, 10 minutes of the video. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was the most perfect, intelligent response we've yeah. ever had. Yeah. Hands down, that was the best intelligent response we've ever seen. Yeah, she said... What were your uh, favourite parts on that video, mate? Oh, just oh, the whole thing. Um, what about the what about the <laughs> the two knocks that we got? Well, actually, it was I think it was four. It was actually four knocks because um, we were up in the uh, in the area at the top in one of the rooms, and we, I was actually taking the still photos at the time. We were just yeah. about to finish up our investigation. I was actually taking stills, and um, we had the static camera set up uh, against the window on the on a table there near the near the door. And we're over the other side of the room, and I'm taking static, uh, you know, camera shots. And uh, yeah. Pete, Pete, and Emma standing there with us. Next thing you know, we hear this dunk dunk on the door. And you know, it didn't pick it up on the GoPro that we were walking around mm. with, but it picked it up on the static cam, which was right next yeah. to the door. You hear it clear as a bell, knock knock. What was that? And we're like, what was that? Anyway, M freaked out, and she's turned around. <laughs> oh, no, she's walked towards us. You, you went out. You, you went straight out the door. Opened it. No one there. You even walked along the corridor, the um, balcony. Yeah. No one there. And it was like what? I, I still remember walking past them because I had the GoPro. Walking straight past them, looking at her face and going, "Was that you?" And she's like, yeah. "Hell no!" And Hell she no. was like, <laughs> "Yeah, she was gone." Yeah. It was that, that. was pretty full on. That yeah, was an yeah. interesting, interesting thing. The, uh, Sorry, you go. No, I was going to say the K2 meter, man. The K2 yeah, outside. Was the I was going to be, yeah. yeah, go for it, dude. Go. That was intense. The interesting thing about that is because basically we spoke to David. Um, he's a caretaker there. Yeah. And he said that um, 
they did uh, back then bury uh, infants yeah. on that location. Yeah. Now, he gave us a rough estimate of where that um, location was. Yeah. So when we went to it, we're in the middle of an open field. There's no electricity anywhere. Um, no. And our equipment was not close enough to the K2 meter to get the response that it got. Mm. Now, when a K2 goes up into the red and stays on the red, and then you have the uh, intelligent interaction with that by asking that uh, spirit to leave the K2 meter and let it drop back down and then touch it again. Yeah. And to have that in, um, intelligent um, interaction it's just absolutely phenomenal like the the amount of evidence in that one video that yeah. we captured was phenomenal like oh. especially like what about um the german accent and we oh, found yeah. out later in research that um german there was doctor. a german doctor that worked there at the time when yeah. it was working as a hospital yeah. so that was just an amazing bit of footage yeah absolutely. and that's another reason there guys if you are do if you are going to get into this sort of thing and you are or you are doing it if you do your research, things add up, you know, because we were there, we, you know, and um, I can't remember if it was before or after. I think it was before. Yeah, because David had told us, I think, that um, yeah, yeah. there was a German doctor there. But either way, whether it had been before or after, we would have realised and we would have worked it out anyway that a German doctor was there that used to be there and then we heard the German accent. So it's always good to do your research because then when things like that happen, you go, ah, that could be that dude or that could be that, that, that lady, you know, or whatever, you know. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And that's the thing. One thing I'd like to ask, guys, if you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share our content. We're really trying to get to that 1,000 subscribers to open up some new things on YouTube. Yeah. Um, it's really important, guys. Help us share in this time with uh, um, coronavirus. Get us out there. Very important. So we do really appreciate and love you guys. So please help us get to that goal uh what do we go where, where we go now what do you reckon we go to right. what do you got pomona pomona theater the majestic yeah, that's, theater that's what i was thinking yep okay yeah <laughs> you can yeah. start us off on this one mate well i have to admit i really like the way ron uh took us through that you know a bit of a um what an interview if you want to call it an interview yeah. at the start when we when we done that with him um it was really good and the, and uh, oh, what's the other gentleman's name? Um, oh, from right. out the back. Uh, yeah, his name escapes me now. But anyway, he was great too. Um, but there was some really good stuff there that we caught. What about the? Um, oh well, the biggest one for me was the footsteps on the stage. You know, like we were the only two people in the place. We're outside. We're standing on the dance floor area, if you want to call it that. And then, um, yeah. and then right there is the stage, the curtain. And then behind the curtain, we hear this, what well, yeah, wood clog footsteps, like clonk, 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 yep. like someone's actually walking on the stage behind it. I didn't hear it as well as what Pete did because my hearing oh. shot. My, I've been playing drums for like 20 odd years, man. So my hearing shot, uh, you know, being in bands and stuff, you know. But yeah, he's all, I, I, yeah. yeah. Perfect. I rely on his ears. <laughs> so, but yeah, but I ended up hearing it. And then when I did the uh, editing of the video, you could hear it a lot better too. So yeah, if you watch that video, you'll one, see. Yeah. One person that I'd like to thank on for that um, location is Alison. She was yeah. crook as a dog when we did that video and she led us into the premises yeah. for a couple of hours and yeah. she just sat in a car and waited yeah. for us like she was really sick and mate thank you so much for that Alison. that was yeah. absolutely amazing that you would allow us to do that while you were yeah. sick you know thanks Alison. If you're um, but, watching. Yeah. yeah one of my favorite parts to that uh <laughs> majestic theater was when we were sitting in the green room uh -huh, and i yeah. heard that tap 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 scrape scrape yeah that was awesome that was uh, that put even now i get goosebumps from that that was pretty amazing and the thing the good thing about that um little segment is that validates it for me is that you said um literally half a second was it train breaks and within half a second of you saying that the train breaks came on and i yeah. said no that's the train breaks that's not what yeah, i heard because I heard there was a, yeah, across the road is the train state well uh train station 
the lines, moment. just the lines. So the train lines, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we I could hear we could hear a train coming. Anyway, then we heard the tap 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 scrape, and I thought, oh, maybe that's the brakes. And then, and like you said, and then as soon as I said that, within nanoseconds, you hear the actual train brakes come on, and we're like, no, that's the train brakes. <laughs> exactly. That that yeah. that place was so much history there too. To be the only silent theatre it left in Australia. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, after this virus is all finished, guys. One place I recommend for you guys to take your kids for a different experience on history is the Pomona Theatre. Yeah. And let them see what a silent movie is like. Yeah, you know, it, it was great. We watched, we sat there and watched about 10, 15 minutes of one. Mm. It was amazing. Completely mm. different experience, you know? Yeah, it was great. I've never been to one. And it's just like the movies. You sit there and it's, you know, hit, uh, uh, run over on the side with the piano, do, 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 mm. do, you know, while it's playing the black and white screen. And it was great. Uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, anything else that we want to discuss on the Pomona Theatre or you want to move on? I think, I think we can move on to the next one. And the next one, <laughs> this is this next location is one of Dan's favourites because he had a little accident there. Uh, give it to us. Go on. The Hangman's House. The wonderful <laughs> Hangman's House. Oh, yeah. Tell yeah. them about your little accident, Dan. <laughs> All I can say is when you go to a place, especially if it's an abandoned place or somewhere you've never been before, make sure you're wearing... Like in that video I said the other day that we put up the other day, the um, how to be a ghost hunter, wear good boots because I had a nail <laughs> straight through my shoe and uh, into my foot. Oh, man, it wasn't good. Not pleasant at all. <laughs> Getting a yeah. shot the next yeah. day too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's a shot of it, guys. I'll show you now, but that's basically, yeah, the, um, the shot of uh, the nail going through my foot and me having a bit of a squeal. Oh, you're right, Dave. Interesting fact about that. I said to Dan, um, it, we didn't put it into the video, but um, as soon as he um, stood on the nail, I went, oh, man, Claire's going to kill you. Because <laughs> she said, be careful. Be careful, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'm right, I'm right, you know. Uh, yeah, nail in the foot. But the thing is, though, it's a rookie mistake, man. Like you, I mean, Pete and I have both been in security for years, you know. I'm still active. He's retired from it, but been in security for in and out for over 20 years and uh that's a rookie mistake first thing, i mean we went basically i just got home from work and uh where i work at the moment they don't need big thick boots so i just wear black sneakers mm. and um i just got home from work and he said oh let's go check this place out so i just changed my shirt and off we went so i wasn't really thinking you know and then we got there and i was trying to be careful and then yeah just a nail sticking up boom straight onto it Right, true. Uh, but yeah, that was. That what was about the? Thing. Um, that was good. We got chased out of the joint. Well, we didn't get chased out. I should say we got. Yeah. Well, uh, however you want to look at it, but there was people there, man. Like there was people outside. You tell them. You tell them the story. Yeah, we just because um, we heard voices. Um, so we went outside, had a look around the place, out on the road, and we thought we heard someone. No one there. So we walked back into the house because there's two entrances to the hangman's house. Um, the bush is totally taken aback. So if you watch that video, you'll see what I mean by the bush is just totally taken aback. Um, we've walked back into the front entrance where the veranda has started to collapse in. And we've done all our EVPs and everything that uh, we wanted to do there. But Dan said, all right, let's get some... Uh, get the still camera and we'll come back in and take some still shots to see if we can catch anything on, on the camera. So we've walked out. Now there's no lights, no street lights, nothing to illuminate the place. So we've walked out to the car, which is right beside because it's right on a corner. Got the, uh, stat uh, got the um, camera, started walking back. Now this place is pitch black dark, all right? Completely pitch black. Yeah. Dan and I heard voices. I said, do you hear that? And there sounded like there was three or four guys talking inside. And Dan goes, no. And I said, shh, shh, listen. And lo and behold, we heard voices. Now, we've turned around. I've said to Dan, we're out. We're not going back in there. If there's someone in there, we're not going in there. So yeah. we've turned around and started walking out. And then we've heard people come out of the house. Mm. Now, we've pretty much bolted, jumped straight in the car, and we were gone. We didn't want to mess with that, even though... We've done security, both of us, for years. Yeah, we can I hold our own, all the rest of it. it. 
We don't and know what they've got. We didn't have any weapons. We didn't know what they've got. They could have been, they could have been any sort of guys or, or people that uh, were willing to do anything to us. So we're like, nah, we're out of here. Let's just not worry about it. Let's go. Yep, yeah, go. Yeah, it's definitely one place I wouldn't mind going back to, but with a few more guys, <laughs> just for security. You know, or a, just, or a, couple of Yulbies, a couple of Yulbies with us. You know, you'll be good or you'll be sorry, you know. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, all the research I did on that place, mm. there's nothing, nothing online, nothing could be found about the place. So basically someone's obviously left the place yeah. 20, 30, 40 years ago yeah. and there's no, no yeah. history on the place. Well, so like, like very interesting said, place. I was going to say, like you said, nature's just taken it back. It's just, it's not left to anybody. It's just a house sitting on a block of land and it's just nature's grabbing it back and it's just taking it. So, yep. Tell them about your experience and what you saw in that house, Dan, because I didn't see it. Well, you and I were sitting in that, what would you class that as? Like, it would have originally have been a land room or something or? Oh, could have been a little bedroom, I'd say. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, whatever it was. There was a couple. Or a laundry? Def- a what? A laundry, maybe? A little laundry type thing? Oh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, but well, anyway, there was a couple of crates there and some cigarette butts. So it's obviously where you get the local young ones or whoever going and hanging out there every night time and stuff like that. Um, and that's that's who we think, we honestly, we're coming in and uh, while we were there. So they must have been waiting for us to get out or something to go in and hang out again. But anyway, we are sitting there on the milk crates. We had an EVP session going. Um and in the corner of my eye, I look up and I saw something. I didn't really see exactly what it was, but to me, it's sort of something just moved. And I'm like, what was that? You know? Anyway, it went a certain way. And I said to Pete, wait, what's that? And he goes, what? I said, something just moved right over there. And he's like, because he had his back to it. He's like, oh, what? <laughs> he's turned around. Yeah, I freaked out. <laughs> but we couldn't uh, find it. I'm we couldn't it find out. it. Nothing happened again. But I don't think it was a trick of my eye. I definitely know I saw something, but what it was... Mm. It obviously wasn't an mm-hmm. animal or a you know a, um, a bat or anything like that because we would have seen it, you know. I mean, you said it was up high too, it went across the ceiling. Yeah, like a yeah up high, you know. I was like, what's anyway? If they watch the video, they'll see that in there as well. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. mm, it was pretty yeah pretty interesting. That's for sure. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. That was the recap on season one for Night Watches. So we hope you enjoyed it, and uh, don't forget, stay safe. Stay away from harm's way. Peace, love, all the rest of it. We're out of here. Catch us later. See you on the next one.